and you are watching Messenger. The United Nations Security Council has five permanent members, a legacy of the Second World War, which is Great Britain, uh, USA, Germany, and France, and China. So today on Messenger, we are going to talk about the United Nations Security Council and African countries' representation. And to do that, I have Zaudu Mangesha from School of Law and Ababa Yirga from Political Science and International Studies, both from Baharda Universities. Thank you for joining me in the studio today. Thank you. Thank you for having so us. So we are going to talk about the United Nations Security Council and African countries' representation. Before we do that, let's talk about the structure of the United Nations Security Council and its working method when they selected members on non-permanent non and permanent members of the United Nations Council. So okay, can I start with you? Let, tell us about the structure of the United Nations Security Council and its working method and the reform it has been undergone for the last 40 or 50 years. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, of course, you know, uh, in 1945, while uh, the United Nations came to picture, one of uh, the principal organ within this uh, uh, institution uh, was uh, United Nations Security Council. So at that time, uh, when uh, this charter came to a uh, picture, uh, the Security Council uh, had a member of uh, 11 states, of which uh, five of them were uh, a permanent member and six of them were uh, you know, uh, non-permanent members. Uh, and uh, later, in 1963, uh, uh, there was a reform, and uh, that reform, uh, uh, which is really existing in the present days, is uh, increasing the non-permanent uh, members of the United Nations, uh, I mean the Security Council, to uh, ten. Uh, it is possible to look that uh, from the very time of 1945 to the present days, uh, we have almost more than uh, 70, uh, 3, 74, uh, 75 years. So through this period, there are a lot of changes, especially if you look at the very time when the security, I mean, the, uh, the UN uh, was established, there were only 51 states. But currently, we have more than uh, 193 states. And again, even if you look at uh, the very time when uh, the, uh, the UN was uh, established, only four African states were a member. But currently we have uh, more than 54 states uh, of, uh, more than 54 uh, states, that is just account almost 28, more than uh, uh, member states are from Africa. Uh, so uh, we can look that there is, a, you know, uh, changes and uh, as a very time, while uh, the UN was established, it is basically those who uh, win the Second World War uh, were taken the permanent seat and still maintain uh, to the present day. So uh, a need for reform within uh, the Security Council is uh, uh, just was emerged even uh, uh, just after its establishment like uh, less than 20 years uh, ago, that is in 1963, there was a minor reform. But uh, starting from uh, 20 years, 25 years back, uh, there is a, uh, a movement for uh, a massive reform within the United Nations Security Council. Of course, uh, this reform uh, was uh, supported by different uh, groups like um, the African states groups, uh, the group uh, 69, and uh, there is also a group, uh, G4 group, uh, uh, four states, uh, which basically, uh, 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 basically Indian, Japan, uh, Brazil, and uh, Germany were requested for uh, a reform, especially those G4 groups are requested for having a permanent uh, uh, seat within the Security Council. And other countries like Italy have also come up with different uh, 
uh, modes of reform that increase uh, the number of the number of security council uh, seats. Uh, so uh, there are a lot uh, just you know uh, 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 reform agendas that are forwarded by different states and group uh, within the security council. So let me come to Ababa. Does the current composition of the United Nations Security Council reflect the world that we are living in now? Oh, no. Uh, I think we have to be honest. The, the main thing that make, that make the United Nations Security Council undemocratic is its composition and uh, its reluctance to, to change so as to reflect the world we are, are living in and also the kids. Uh, when we come to uh, its composition, it has, uh, uh, as my colleague has said, it has already neglected Africa. And uh, Africa accounts, as he said, uh, more than 28% of uh, member states. So it has, been, it has been neglecting and it has been reluctant to, to, to accommodate changes, to accommodate uh, justice, because this is also making the United Nations Security Council unjust and unfair. Because may, uh, these permanent five uh, P five status are uh, primarily based on their national interests, neglecting the issue, the pro the real process also. So this member states mainly p5 uh, permanent member states are not willing to even uh, reform the composition and also the practice so the real the rule of games have not yet been changed and uh, they are comfortable with with what the the privilege they are having so uh, this has to be changed and the, uh, it is the right time, uh, even, even though it is too late, still it, it is the right time to change. Uh, Af African, most of the issues, most of the cases uh, in which the United Nations Security Council uh, are having are from Africa. So up to now, more than 2,600 uh, resolutions were just uh, published, and more than half of the kids were from Africa, so uh, where Africans are not present and where Africans are, have no voice to uh, to pass their own decisions, it is uh, really sad to experience uh, the uh, countries which do not have uh, African uh, experience, which do not know Africa very well, are deciding for Africans. So we, this is uh, this is against uh, the law it is also unfair and unjust this is making the united nation uh, inefficient because P uh, member states are having uh, no interest on the united nations security council's resolutions so this needs to be changed and uh, africans need to wake up because this is the the time that they have to and for themselves. And uh, as we know, African uh, 2063 agenda, agenda 2063 uh, has one slogan, which is resolving African problems by Africans. So African solutions for Africans. So in this case, African uh, solutions are garnered from uh, non-Africans who, uh, who don't know the the real situation who don't know the process of the kids so these states these permanent states are in most cases reflecting not the interests of africans but their national their national interests their geopolitical interests and their uh, uh, international political interests so this is against the law so if we say the current composition of the United Nations Security Council is wrong or inappropriate for African countries, let's see the reason. Why did they exclude the developing countries, particularly the African countries? Would you like to start? Okay, yeah. Uh, 
uh, you know, the major reason is because while uh, it was established in 1945, uh, of course, most of African states were under colony, and uh, the very institution is not changing the status quo it has in 1945. We are in the 21st century, but it still it maintain what it have in 1945. Again, uh, if you look uh, the very structure within the United Nations, is still it maintain uh, the institution that was established that is not even currently functioning, like the trusteeship council. It is not functioning well, but still maintain uh, within the structure of the United Nations. Uh, we have no any colonized country in the present day, but still maintain what it has in 1945. So. Uh, I think one of the, the challenge here is uh, those um, uh, the, uh, uh, permanent member uh, of the United Nations Security Council fears any change within the United Nations Charter have an effect on their you know, uh, veto power, which is granted to them uh, and, uh, because of the way they win Second World War and establish this organization, I mean the United Nations. So. Uh, it is not in a position to uh, properly reflect the current scenarios of uh, our you know, globe. Uh, so the major problem here within the very structure, it maintained what is existed in the 1945. Again, uh, what I can say is that there is you know, um, you know, uh, different interests even within uh, the permanent seat holders of the Security Council. Uh, some of uh, the states like um, China uh, may just fear uh, just uh, increment of any uh, uh, Security uh, Council seat uh, for permanent members which may possibly have you know, uh, permanent seats like uh, countries which are within uh, group uh, G4, uh, like uh, countries like Japan and uh, India are not welcomed by you know, uh, countries uh, li like China. And again, there is also a fear from uh, the um, French as well as uh, uh, Great Britain on, uh, uh, on having additional members of uh, uh, you know permanent seat holders that may they may feel that uh, the uh, the the rights and the privileges that are provided by the UN security uh, i mean the UN uh, uh, charter in 1945 may be eroded in some way because they, th it is uh, you know uh, having such a power especially having a veto power within the united nations system is a privilege so they don't want to lose that privilege uh, but it cannot pre, uh, properly reflect what you have in the current you know, uh, world. Uh, even though the, their conflicting strategic interests are different, the five permanent members, they, have, they need an update and the United Nations Security Council need a reform, right? We are talking about reform. So like, if we have a reform in the United Nations Security Council, what could be the significance of adding or including new permanent and non-permanent members of the Security Council? Well, uh, as, as I told you, the effectiveness and the efficiency of a United Nations Security Council would be, would be really increased because uh, having more permanent members, especially representatives from Africa, and from other developing global sources, I would say, uh, would make the, uh, the popularity and the acceptance and the confidence of people on, 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 on the United Nations Security Council. But the problem is the Security Council is not designed to accommodate changes. For instance, uh, Africa has 54 uh, member states which accounts 42% uh, of 190, uh, 129 votes which are needed so as to approve any, any changes. So this indicates that it is really, uh, the, the system itself is really reluctant for change. So what Africans and uh, 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 
people from the global south need to do is that they have to pressure, put pressure and pressure on uh, the member states so that the General Assembly could be called and uh, to certain majority votes needs to be recorded so that the, the, the question for reform could, could be passed. And, and there needs to be political and uh, uh, diplomatic work from Africans so that uh, African question could be uh, could be secured. For instance, in 1963, when African Union was formed, and when uh, His Majesty Imperial uh, Emperor Haile Selassie uh, accepted his uh, his uh, chairmanship as the first uh, chairman of African Union organization of African Union, he stressed on decolonizing Africans. Africa has been politically and economically uh, colonized. And even though Africa is formally uh, independent, it has not yet experienced political freedom, economic freedom, and uh, uh, cultural freedoms. So that to, to, to achieve these things, Africans need to uh, wake up and need to uh, get un united to put more pressure and to keep this question because this question has not yet uh, been answered. So I think uh, what, what we need to do as the member says is that we have to uh, push member states, mainly permanent member states to accept because uh, even to, to change, to, to pass any amendments, there needs to be uh, all yes is from mem permanent member states, which is in most cases uh, unlikely to happen. So this makes uh, the United Nations Security Council not, not pro-reform. So it is a rigid council. We can Perfectly, say that. Uh, we can say like that. So it is obvious that if you are not a member of uh, Uni United Nations Security Council, you, ha you have no right of like voting for reform or change, right? So speaking about reforms and change, we have three elected African members of the United Nations Security Council, which are Niger, Kenya, and Tunisia. So who is going to evaluate their effectiveness in the United Nations Security Councils, and how could the AC three countries or the three elected members, African countries, contribute in shaping the debate or the decision of the United Nations Security Council? Okay, thank you. Uh, before directly dealing uh, with this question, I, I just want to uh, have some opinion on uh, what is the reform issues within uh, the United Nations Security Council. Uh, there are uh, major issues uh, that needs reform. The first one is regarding uh, the membership categories. Uh, as uh, it is known, there are two type of uh, membership category within the United Nations Security Council. The first one is uh, permanent members, and the second one is non-permanent members. Uh, if you look at the UN uh, Charter, it is not in a position to clearly articulate what different duties and responsibilities are stated on those uh, permanent members as well as non-permanent members. So uh, within these membership categories, uh, there is you know, a need to have some sort of reform. What duties are imposed upon those uh, permanent members and non-permanent members? So can For we example, say there is a mandate confusion? Of course. For example, if you look uh, in terms of contribution, contribution for the peacekeeping force, uh, none of uh, the permanent members uh, ha just placed, uh, uh, except I think, except China, none of them were uh, placed in one to ten categories, which contributed a lot, especially in terms of human resource for the peacekeeping uh, missions. So uh, there should be a separate duty that is imposed upon uh, such a state. Again, uh, there is also the issue of regional representation. Uh, you know, uh, if you look uh, Africa, which is just uh, uh, more, uh, almost all African states are members of the United Nations Security Council, but there is you know, any 
African state with, uh, within the permanent uh, uh, just uh, seat within the UN, uh, UN uh, Security Council. So uh, it is important also to have a regional representation within the Security Council. Uh, within the African proposal, for example, the African uh, state, uh, uh, I think in, to, in 2005, come up with a proposal uh, with uh, uh, what should be reformed, with uh, what, should, what should the reform included uh, within the United Nations Security Con Council. According to that proposal, uh, it requested uh, the UN Security Council at least to have two permanent uh, representatives from Africa. And again, uh, at least five, five uh, non-permanent seats should be uh, provided for Africa. That is taking into consider uh, East Africa, uh, West Africa, South Africa, Central Africa, and North Africa. So uh, the regional representation should be taken into account. Again, here uh, there is also uh, a need to consider uh, the size of the Security Council. Uh, of course, right now we have only 15 states. Of course, that is in order to make decision within the Security Council, all uh, the weight of powers states should uh, give their agreement. In addition to that, four states need to give consent. So that for substantive matters, we need to have uh, nine votes. Of the nine votes, uh, the uh, permanent security uh, council members that are the, the, the states which have a veto of power should uh, adhere to or should not uh, negate or uh, that state may not uh, just uh, reject that proposal. So uh, this, the enlargement of the council uh, will have its own advantage to take into consider the regional representation. So uh, having said this, uh, let, come, uh, let me come to your uh, question about the A3 states. Right now, uh, based on the existed uh, framework of the United Nations, uh, African states will have, uh, uh, are having three representatives. Uh, the three representatives are non-permanent seat holders. Uh, and again, every uh, two years, uh, the representative may be changed. Uh, may change with an or uh, may be uh, may a new state may, may a new African state may be elected. Of course, uh, after the coming into existence of AU African Union, uh, there was attempts uh, and still there are attempts to take into consider position on issues that are reflecting the African agenda. Uh, basically, this can be reflected on their position. Uh, of the Security Council members on current issues which uh, our country is having. So in these instances, most African states take a position that non-intervention should be the principle and uh, issues that are uh, considered domestically or issues that are considered internal matters of the state should not be uh, uh, should not be discussed by the Security Council. So this is reflected by uh, most uh, African states. Of course, sometimes, of course, sometimes uh, when they have their own political issues and their own separate agendas, they may not clearly reflect the African Union common positions. Uh, this can be uh, mentioned from instances where uh, Tunisia take uh, the issue of GERD to the Security Council in support of Egypt. So uh, sometimes they may not clearly even reflect uh, the AU agenda, rather they may uh, prefer to uh, look issues from their own perspective. Of course, uh, within the current framework of the Security Council, uh, within the current uh, framework of the Security Council, uh, the membership is only to the states. It's not for international organizations. That's why uh, even uh, the Africans and the EU tries to influence uh, other states uh, to take uh, issues of their regional interests within uh, the Security Council. Uh, but right now, m maybe in the future, this may be changed. So there is a need of collective engagement of the AC countries in the United Nations Co Security Council. Maybe they could do better. Yes, of course, because you know uh, the current framework, uh, for example, the three states are selected by AU. 
uh, and of course they have to give the endorsement of the United Nations General Assembly. So if they are uh, selected by uh, the African Union, they have to take into consider the interest of the African Union states. That's why I'm saying that uh, whenever those African, uh, because they are representing, uh, the seats are, the non-permanent seats are represented for uh, the African, the three seats, so that whenever the African interests are there, they have to properly address or they have to properly reflect the interests of the African states because they are there uh, taking into consider the regional representations. How are they doing? Uh, so yeah, far. of course, sometimes they are doing good. Sometimes they may take into consider their own interest. Uh, I just uh, read uh, uh, research which is conducted uh, uh, you know, in 2015, and that research reflected that sometimes uh, member states within the Security Council uh, may take advantage of that seat for their own than the regional representation, so that they may get uh, some sort of aid or uh, even the research so that when the states, especially the developing states, are uh, uh, taking to that uh, position, they may uh, get additional aids and uh, uh, supporters by countries because uh, it is believed that they are uh, serving that interest. Let's come to Ethiopia and the Security Council. So the Security Council was conducting like a consecutive meetings about Ethiopia and how did the AC countries, representatives of Africa, react to, to that? Uh, well, uh, as my colleague mentioned, uh, in most cases, uh, 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 S3 member states uh, just, uh, they just stated joint uh, press statements and uh, they uh, they stood together and they were they have been well informed and well uh, in, inspired by Afri African Union uh, Peace and uh, Security Council so that council has played a good role in in bringing three African uh, states to to form a block and to make uh, a joint statement so that they could they could really represent the issue of Africa for Africans so this this would make things a, a little better a little bit better but uh, a lot has to be done uh, as he said in, in some cases these African representatives have been standing against African uh, interests, African state interests. Uh, the go a good example could be uh, the issue of the GERD. The issue of the, the, issue of the GERD is not a peace and uh, security issue. It is a development issue. So this, has, this should have been uh, seen at the Beijing level and states have been dealing with their own uh, capacity. So some, some states violating African issues for African solutions for African issues should not uh, submit the case to United Nations Security Council. Uh, uh, apart from that, when it comes to uh, the things in which Africans share, for instance, uh, political independence, I mean non-interference from, from uh, developed states, I mean global norms, uh, uh, Africans African members, they all agree and they all stand against non-interference. And uh, unfairly, and also, uh, I, I, would say, I would say unjustly, Ethiopia has been treated uh, in, in the United Nations Security Council with a lot of injustice and with a lot of uh, undemocratic and undiplomatic uh, understandings and uh, uh, conditions. Ethiopia, most of Ethiopian cases were unnecessary to be to be seen at the United Nations Security Council. Most of them were about internal issue of Ethiopia, and uh, this could this should have been dealt by the Ethiopian capacity. So, status mostly mostly running against the national sovereignty of Ethiopia and instead running for, 
to secure their uh, geopolitical interest and their national interest have been constantly uh, declining Ethiopia's sovereignty and Ethiopia's capacity uh, to solve its internal problem. Instead, they have been magnifying uh, the issues. They have been uh, exacerbating the issues. They have been uh, even diplomatically equating Ethiopia with, 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 with neo-colonial clique, the TPLF, uh, in which they, uh, they have been treating Ethiopia in the way they don't like to be treated in the same way they want Ethiopia to be treated. So this is something immoral. This is something illegal. This is something which makes the United Nations uh, irrelevant. Because uh, when the United Nations is just going against the real things happening on the ground, then the relevance of uh, United Nations Security Council could be totally washed away. It could be uh, eroded and people would not uh, prefer to submit their case to the to the Security Council as their confidence could be uh, eroded. So, uh, but, but we have to be critical also. This non, uh, in most cases, this non, uh, this non permanent Security Council members and permanent Security Council members uh, are not always against the in the, uh, the interest of the people concerned. For instance, there are uh, United Nations Permanent Security Council members and uh, uh, non-permanent members who have been supporting Ethiopia, who have been understanding uh, the issue clearly and the reality on the ground. So this, we, sh we should acknowledge this. And uh, African member uh, status who are, who are uh, in the S3 uh, block are doing good, so far so good. Uh, but but there, needs to, there needs to be a clear strategy by the, the, by the African Union Peace and Security Council so that they could always stand for the interests of Africa and they could not be uh, twisted by, by neo-colonial powers and by, uh, yeah. by their selfish national interests. Let me come to Zaudu. Would you like to conclude this thing because we are run of running out of time? Okay. Uh, I think yeah, it is important to mention the recent call by the Prime Minister of uh, Ethiopia about joining other African states for a reform uh, within the United Nations Security Council. You know, I just look this as part of uh, the No More movement. Uh, which is just taken by even other African states as important uh, for just tackling uh, the Western state, you know, meddling and interference. So as part of that movement, I think uh, the reform within the United Nations Security Council is important. Uh, as I said earlier, in 2005, uh, with the uh, Ilzuini uh, consensus, where the African uh, states, more than 43 states, just come up with uh, an agreement, African states mm -hmm. come up with an agreement to, ha uh, in order to have a reform within the United Nations Security Council. So uh, this has to be, you know, uh, deal with uh, strong collaboration and cooperation with African states through the AU. And again, even um, other uh, like-minded states are there, uh, especially uh, the Latin Americans and Asian states are also supporting a call for reform within the United Nations Security Council. So uh, African states uh, should work together with other like-minded like -minded state for a reform within the United Nations Security Council. Zaudu Mangesha and Ababa Yirga, thank you for joining us today. This is Amhara Media Corporation and you were watching The Messenger and we were talking about African countries' representation on United Nations Security Council and I am Fikradi Zodu. See you next time.